Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So we are on block Wednesday, block number two for hometown charms. It is all about what is homey and charming and lovely about what we call our hometowns. So j before I start, I have the door open to the outside because it is such low humidity today. It is beautiful. The temperature is, I don't know, like mid seventies or something. And it's just low humidity, which is so gorgeous. Earlier though, of course, I had the sounds of urban uh, leaf blowers, but now I have quiet out there. Not even a car going by. <laughs> so if you hear some birds, that's where it's coming from. Okay, our block, our block for hometown charms is a wonderful log cabin because a log cabin is a, a home, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> but I also wanted to give you an easy block for block two because block one had a little bit more work to it. Um, we were using the Will You Be My Neighbor block because I love that house so much. It was just perfect for this project. Um, and let me show you mine. Let me show you my hometown charms for this week, week two. So week two is all about street games. So what are street games? Things that you did as a kid that you played outside. A lot of times you may have played them in the street, like a kickball game. Um, you may have played some other kind of games, like you know when, the, when it was starting to get dark, you would do things like you play some sort of tag around the light poles. Um, one of the things I remember as a kid was playing carnival. Like we would create our own carnivals and I can remember turning the bicycle upside down so that I could turn the, uh, the pedal and then the wheel would go like this and it, it felt like it was one of the games at the carnival. Like, you know, people would have, we'd get like little prizes, we'd go in our stuff and find things we could have for prizes at the carnival. So that is one of my memories. And at my website today, uh, some of our ambassadors have given their uh, hometown um, memories about street games. And I, I have to tell you that one of them said that if she had been playing in the street, she would have been yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> so not necessarily, you don't have to necessarily be in the street. If you were playing something that was kind of that, that, that vibe to it. I mean, I lived in apartment complexes as a, as a kid up until I was in high school. I didn't, I, I always lived in apartment complexes. So, you know, we didn't have a lot of space. We played in the, in the parking lots and things like that a lot. Okay. Let's go take a look at how I got to these fabrics. Oh, I love them. Okay. Let's go look. So we have a nice contrast. It's a great log cabin block with a big center. So for those of you who are using some really interesting fabrics, maybe novelty prints, maybe things with a lot of larger scale on them, this is a great center for you to use now for today's block. Uh, so this is also the format. So I want to remind you, you have the layout already. You can download it at the project page. Uh, there's a link to it today, right under the download for this pattern. Uh, and there's the block, uh, where is it? Block two. So we're sort of in that, this is the format that we're working with. And also remember, I have a bonus of the block and repeat or the block with sashing, just to show you what that single block can do. Because just like we repurpose the house block from another project into this one, blocks can be used in all different ways in all different places. You don't have to have it in one quilt and that's the only way it can ever be used. Uh, it, there's lots of ways to use the blocks that you have. And I really like that repeat. I think that's kind of fun because I did it so that there was like an outside edge for the log cabins. Do you see that? The darker is like on the outside edge, makes kind of like this little frame. I think that would be a really fun one to do up. Maybe something like our block a day for March. Remember in March we do a block a day. This one might be good. I'm going to I'm going to put that in my folder and keep it as an idea. All right, on to the fabric. <laughs> I'm not going to use the pink or the green because I did that for the house. So I have some options here. I did pull two other colorways because you know I'm using a fat quarter bundle, which means that I'm just working with what I have for that. So I have some whites and creams um, and I have the pinks and greens that I already used in the house block. And then a few of them that I bought extra of. So there was a teal which is kind of neat. I like the teal and there's just two of them. So of course that's all I need, right? You just need two of the darker, two of the lighter, and then a center. The center can be dark or it can be light. I just have it dark in the picture. So I thought, well, if I did the this floral um, and then 
did teals and taupe. So here's some taupe. Now the taupe, oh, this is really pretty. Look at this. Look at this. This is Lady Tulip. Oh, isn't that pretty? Oh, I like that. So if I did taupe, I would want to have, I think, something. So like this one has green in the, the teal in it teal and then taupe like that so i'm thinking that would be good but let me show you another option see here was the tulips i think just has a too much the dots would also be good so but i think definitely has to be this one and then either the dots or this tonal this is just so pretty i mean the other thing is this could go in the middle somehow and have a really beautiful fussy cut of that image in the center let me think about that Let's put these over here for a second. Okay, another option is to use these sort of oranges, and there's three of those. So I would want to do the stripe and one of the others rather than these two together, which, you know, are fine, but I think the stripe is a lot more fun. So the stripe and then one of the others really probably wouldn't matter which. I could go with these greens. So they're not greens. They're, I'm sorry, they're like a acidy green yellow yeah there's I think they call it like old gold so now there is this pattern with the little round flowers um, and they're an orange which is kind of cute they don't have as much contrast to the light but that's all right this one also has the orange uh, so that would be that would be a higher contrast you see how much higher that contrast is than with that this floral now you could go dark I did use this for the roof of the house, but I'm okay using it again because I have a bigger chunk of it. And that looks fabulous. It's got the kind of gold in there. It's got the orange. And the other thing would be to use the taupe with the tulip, which would also be pretty good. I mean, this I think is the most striking of them for this combination is the most striking, but I can't decide like, do I like over here? So like if I use this taupe in the middle, like if I made this as the middle square, something like this, could I do the teal and the orange? That's really nice. That looks really good too. Okay, okay, so what combo do I go with? I'm sort of liking this guy with, it's got the light one light one just to be a little bit different and not so predictable um, otherwise with this which is so good I mean I could put a great big I could put a great big tulip in there all right let me cut it up and I'll show you before I sew it what I'm gonna go with okay options for the middle here's see what I went with I went with the teal the teal and this sort of persimmon orange so this has the orange flowers and it's got a sort of a yellow based background and that does look really good that I really like that one it feels very fall uh, then of course the dark one so the dark one I think also looks really good but that is dark that is dark now it has a really high contrast I'm not sure that I want that I thought I did I thought this was it but no so then I could do something with the tulips and this is on the taupe so it's different like for the house it was on the pink and there I could just fussy cut it so the tulips come from the middle and I kind of like that I'd like to get as much tulips in here I think as possible so winner winner chicken dinner I'm gonna cut it up so see how I did the fussy cutting I wanted the tulips to sort of come out from the corner so I specifically put my ruler so that I could do that. And I, to fussy cut meant that I was not using the fabric efficiently, but I'm okay with that because with the fat quarter bundle, there's, there's enough fabric here to, to mess around. I'm not going to feel deprived, but I wanted to show you what that looks like. You know, so you end up with something like this. You know, so I have that unit out, out of the area, but like, you know, this is very usable size, but this gave me that tulip spray that I really wanted with those two tulips. All right, let me do a mail call. I have Royal Mail. So look, Royal Mail. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. And this is from England and it is from Janet. 
And Janet also noted that both her street and my street have part of Oliver Cromwell's name in it, which is, is fun. Mine is actually Oliver Cromwell, and hers just has the Cromwell part in, in her town. Um, but she found this for me because she thought of the uh, horse quilt I want to do for my great niece. And so she found these two labels uh, and sent them to me. Isn't that great? I think these will definitely, one of these will definitely work. I, I kind of like the saddle uh, blanket one. I think that that will be fabulous for my niece's quilt, which I'm thinking I might do that in um, December. Her birthday is in early February, so I'm thinking it might be in December. I might make that up and just do it. Okay, let's go and look at my cross stitch pillow, the fabric we're going to we, the royal we, uh, <laughs> the fabric I want to use for that, I'm trying to decide. So let's take a look. It's time to turn the Boo Crew stitchery into a cute little pillow. So here's the stitchery again, the cross stitch. Ta da! I am so, so excited to have it done. And I've started the one for Christmas time. I'll show you that in a minute. I'll show you that when we're done here. But this is the pillow form I have. Uh, and I used it for this panel from a while ago. So, you know, inside is a pillow form. And usually when I want to get these out, I just take my hand up and smush it. I smush all of this down. See, it's like smushed down. Got my hand at the end of it so that I can smush it all down to the opening and just sort of pop it out like that. At least that's, that is my approach to getting these out of the sleeve. Okay. So here it is, and I have a link um, down below for you on this pillow form. So if you want to get one, and it'll fit the Boo Crew. Now the Boo Crew, let's see, we'll just sort of mock it up here. You know, I want to put some border on it. So I have some fabric options here, and it's going to have to be a little bit funky. Like the borders will probably be wider. They obviously have to be, I want them wider on the bottom than on the sides. Because I think it has to be like that. I have to do a little diagram for myself and figure out the sizes. But for now, let's just figure out the fabric. Because I don't know what I want it to be. Uh, so I have some ideas. I thought it would be good to put some purple first. Like a little strip. Maybe a one inch around purple. And then after that, I have a few options. So let's take a look. Some of these are from the um, Midnight Moon. So I love this fabric and I have, a little, I have plenty of it. I can do the backing as well in this fabric. So I think that's a really, a really, really good option with the purple there. So let me just go through all the ones that I picked. I have the gray with the candy corn and I really like candy corn. I know some of you, it's not your gig, but the candy corn is cute too. But I think I like this floral better. So that goes underneath. Then I thought, okay, well, let's see the orange. If we want to do an orange border with a little purple inner border, so that gives it a totally different look than the than the black and white than this one. It's the same fabric. That looks really good too, but I don't think I want it that orange. I'm leaning towards this, but then I also have look at this. Uh, yeah, that looks nice too. It doesn't have as much personality as this one. Now when I was getting these, I also, let me scroll you in here, because I also found enough of this sort of ghosts going sideways. See, they're like cute little ghosts here, this way. See the little happy faces? And I thought, little happy faces. It's too, they're too bland to go f without an inner border first. But what if I did three borders and had the ghosts like this? Let me put this here. So, but. I'm not sure that it adds anything. And I think definitely if I did the floral, it doesn't, I don't think it really adds anything at all for the floral. Like you don't even really see it um, because it'd have to be sort of narrow. So I'm between these two. These two here for the, the border, the next border, the outer border, and it would also be the backing of the pillow, so. Anyway, give your comments. Give your comments which one you like. Okay, so that is that is my options. Let me show you how much I got done on the Christmas time. Yes, I'm working on the candy. 
So I've got it almost done. So I'm working on the green part to fill in. It's like a, I guess a spearmint candy because it has red and green swirls in it. Uh, and then is the bow. So that's the other, this is the free pattern. So I can show it to you. So there's the bow. And I will, I'm going to work really hard on those two so that I can go work a bit on the one I have left, the letters to Santa from um, before, before I started Boo Crew. So I have the letters to Santa. So I want to get back and do some of this and switch between the Christmas time and the letters to Santa and try to get both of those finished during the month. Okay, the other thing I have is let me just pop up this little video because I do have to fix this basket of Halloween fabric as well. The other thing I have to do is go ahead. These were um, from the quilt and I need to fold them and get them so that they go a long ways in here and they're not just laid on top. These are from Midnight Moon mostly with a few of the ones from the Boo Crew quilt, which is in the mail back to me, by the way. So this is the other thing I have to do is just open those so that they're long ways and sort them by color and stick them in here. So now I am ready to decide. Leave your comments and I'll show you in the next video or the one after what I decided on for the pillow. And before we go, I must tell you Dolly, our Dolly Lama here, <laughs> she has heard from Norma Nanette and that we're going to get an update soon on their adventure. So they've been having some adventures and they finally wrote Dolly and told her about them. And so I will be getting a note soon and some pictures about where they are. So let's do our street games for Hometown Charms. Share this block and the games that you played as a kid, or maybe you play now with your grandkids, um, so, or your own kids. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.